Jaquaski Tart. He may have played his final game with the 49ers. And if he did, let's go through what he did. First off, turf toe. IR, no real indication when he's coming back or if he'll come back. I mean, let's say the Niners go on a run, make the playoffs. He theoretically might be able to return for the playoffs. But then again, if the Niners go 5-2 and two and make the playoffs, probably it means that his replacement was better than him. And why would they switch things up if they go 5-2 and two or 6-1 and one over the next, whatever, seven games? And so then if the Niners lose a bunch of games and the season's over, why would he come back when they've been eliminated? Because he's not going to be on this team next year, most likely. He'll be a free agent. The Niners have so many other people they have to sign. They have to give Fred Warner an extension. They have to give Trent Williams an extension. Uh, there's no money for Jaquaski Tart. So I think it's possible he's played his final game with the 49ers. So let's look back on his career. He was a second-round pick in 2015. Trent Balky took him. One of the better picks of Trent Balky's career. This is this is Jaquaski Tart's final stat line, maybe, with the 49ers. Six seasons, 66 games played. That's an average of what? 11 games a season. He missed 23 games. And if he misses the rest of the games this year, he'll he will have missed 30. That's five a season. So he's good for 11, and he's going to miss five. That's Jaquaski Tart. In those 11 games per season, he racked up 301 tackles, 16 tackles for loss, four interceptions, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, four sacks, 17 pass breakups. Not the greatest career. Not a bad career. He was a decent player. That's how I'll remember Jaquaski Tart. If my, if my kids are like, Hey, Dad, who was this number 29 who was the strong safety for the 49ers for six seasons? What was it like? What was he like? I'll be like, yeah, he was Dece. And then I'll change the subject. Yeah, he was cool. He was all right. End of story. Well, what did he, what did he do really well? Was he like a really, like a really hard-hitting tackler? No, not really. No. Oh, okay. Well, was he um, a playmaker? Did he get the ball away from the team a lot? No, I wouldn't. He wasn't that either. Okay, so he wasn't a tone setter. He wasn't a playmaker. Was he a coverage specialist? No, not really. Not a, not, not a coverage specialist either. Um, he's good in man to man coverage when he's not misdiagnosing runs and passes. That's the problem. Safeties have to play the run, and he has a tough time realizing what's a run and what's the pass. So then my, my son or daughter or grandson will be like, okay, so what was, what made Jaquaski, how did he make tens of millions of dollars in the NFL? And I'll say, I don't know, he had a great name. And a lot of people, I liked him. He was a nice guy. He would uh, talk to you in the locker room and he would respond to your criticisms and stuff. Although he's very sensitive, very sensitive. I mean, he will, if, if you go on Twitter right now and, and tweet something about him, he'll read it. And a larger point about athletes in general at least athletes who were younger than me, they seem to misinterpret coaching as criticism. I wouldn't be surprised if that was Dante Pettis' issue. A lot of these guys have been coddled since middle school or, or younger. They've been identified as a future athletic star by seventh grade. They're on special teams. They're getting ranked by special websites like rivals and stuff as – they have, they have stars next to their name, five-star recruits, four-star recruits. So when they finally get to the NFL, no one's ever critiqued them before. No one's ever said, you don't do this particularly well. All they've heard since they were 13 is, you're the greatest. You're so good. Will you please be on my team? Will you please come to my school? Will you please sign this contract? Will you? Can I please be your agent? And then finally get to the NFL and you get a coach who's like, what in the world is this? And people are like, well, why are you being a hater? Why are you being a hater? So um, Tart, whichever team gets Jaquaski Tart is getting a very sensitive, strong safety who misses five games a season and doesn't make plays. Other than that, he's terrific. The best sensitive, non-playmaking, non-hard-hitting, non-durable safety in the league. But, but there's no question about it. He is in another category 
You know, he is the elite of the elite of the unreliable strong safeties. Yeah. So whichever team gets him, good luck. Have fun.